Hey guys, so we've got another image sent in. He sent me this ages ago when we did tutorials on his style uh, a few months ago, but we're doing it now. As you can see, his style is very vibrant. There's maybe a touch of a Mac look going on. So we're gonna bring down the curves and the highlights a bit and then just warm tones and cool tones. So maybe enhancing the blues a bit and enhancing the warm tones a little. Otherwise, they're pretty much the natural tones, but they just really stand out and we've got to bring up the vibrance. So go give him a follow down in the description, guys. He also sells his presets over on his website and I'll also be linking to them down in the description. And if you keep an eye out for the passcode, that appears during this video you'll be able to get the settings from this tutorial so keep an eye out for that really nice work guys make sure you go give them a follow down in the description and just before we get into this tutorial guys check out the free training down in the description for my course so my course is designed for beginners through to advanced and then we've got a bunch of talented photographers teaching their own style we've got something like 40 guest editor lessons now where you get the raw image you get the settings and you get the lesson to go along with it so you really learn the tools and you walk away with the exact same settings with these exact same images and you learn a lot and that's the goal of this course slash academy to create the number one resource for learning photo editing and ultimately creating your own style because you're actually gonna get the skills it takes to understand the Lightroom tools color contrast and then the resources on top of that so like the raw images and the tutorials to build out your own style so that's the goal free training down in the description guys let's get into this tutorial okay okay here we have the edited image and then our original raw image as you can see the white balance isn't too good in this one so here's the settings 35 millimeters 1.8 a 35 is a good length if you want to include a bit of background for a portrait iso low and then your shutter just really quick to expose it properly and because we've got a wide aperture probably want that pretty quick to make sure it's not too bright okay so let's really drop the temperature because out of camera way too warm okay so that gets us a bit closer and then we look a little too purple i would say especially in the whites there so i'm just gonna whack this down Okay, so white balancing it, as you can see, way too warm. And then we've got a bit closer, it's a bit cold still, but we'll bring that out with a few other tools. So exposure will probably help it feel warmer as well. All right, and then just drop the shadows for a bit of contrast. And so I've done a tutorial on them before, and what I've actually done is just applied the settings I did in the previous tutorial on this one. So I've already done the curves, I'm using the curves for the previous tutorial. So if you haven't seen that, maybe go back and watch that. But this is what we've got here. So there's nothing major going on. So we've got this curve and this is just going to give it that slight Mac look, but we've got quite a lift to the color curves up in the highlights and he's got quite a bright vibrant look so that's why i've chosen to go with a curve like this pretty sure i just applied a curves preset and then matched it to the skin tone so a bit more green in there a little less blue for those warm tones and yeah and then this just to we just exposed it brought down those highlights a bit blacks up a bit just to take off that really dark edge to the blacks and then brought down the whites a bit. Okay, so we also had dehaze in the previous tutorial and that just adds a nice contrast. It kind of mimics bringing down the highlights and shadows a lot. Anyway, in the previous tutorial, I found out that really helped. So in this one, I applied the settings across, got me pretty close when I first applied them. So let's keep going, bit of pop to the brighter area blacks clarity for a touch of smoothness makes the image look a little more natural less digital and then i'm just going to bump up the vibrance because he does have a pretty vibrant warm feeling the colors can pop out quite a bit right coming down working with hsl now so our skin tones look a little green so let's make them a bit more orange our yellows see what they do Shift them away from the green. Reds. So it's quite hard to match up Hujuzi. They look like a red or an orange, but as you can see, these sliders don't 
don't affect this a great deal. They affect it, but not heaps. So what often happens is purples and magentas will get registered as reds or close to red. So you have got to come down here and you can see purple kind of affects it a little bit. I think I want to shift it towards a red over here, away from purple. And then magenta really affects it. And as you can see, we've got really orange reddish tones here. So let's get away from magenta or purple, come over here and we get those nice reds and it looks much closer to his green. So we've got quite a bluey green, quite cold. So we'll keep these over here. And then, so the blues, they're, they're just pretty much a standard blue. They're maybe a touch on the aqua side. So purple would be that way. I'm dealing with the aquas at the moment, but the blues as well affect the same area. I'd say they're pretty good to smack in the middle there. Um, right. Okay, so on to saturation. What we actually should have done is enable profile corrections that will affect our exposure quite a bit. So the reason I definitely want to turn it on, I just think it's very bright down here and up in the corners, especially uh, down there. I think we need to turn that on. I should have done that at the start. Okay, so we're on to saturation. Let's um, just make sure, sure these skin tones pop out. So we've got our oranges. The reds really pop out in this one, I think, like the, the red car. I think we need to bring this up. And then what I'll do right now, just because I think it's kind of obvious, is like the reds in her shirt and the car pop out a lot. So red luminance I might bring up a lot. Now, it obviously wouldn't be this high in every image but i feel like because he wanted the reds to pop out in this image he brought it up a lot then we'll put the luminance of a few other colors slightly bring up oranges yellows does help with that vibrant feeling i think we did that in the previous tutorial as well greens kind of tries to keep his greens kind of natural bring them down a bit blues now, the white balance wasn't great out of camera. I think that is why we get so many blues in the whites. Like you do get that sometimes, but when you don't quite nail it out of camera, I think you start to get a lot of colors in areas they wouldn't have been if you had nailed it out of camera. So we've got a lot of blues and yeah, definitely a lot of blues in the white shirt. We wanna think how bright that is. So yeah, just maybe bring it down a bit. I feel like he's got quite deep blues. I think we might have done that in the other tutorial that we did on his style. And then back to saturation. Greens, let's bring those down. Aquas, let's just make them pop a bit. Blue saturation. Purples, down, just a touch. And magenta. Will I bring them down? The, these parts do pop out a lot. Um, yeah, bring them down and then red saturation, maybe a bit more. Okay, and then just sharpening, we'll just do a bit, just run with, run with that. Okay, so we're looking pretty good and what I didn't show you guys is I did some brushing. Now the brushing isn't that intense, so that's why I just left it there. I don't think it played a big role in my decisions with the other settings. So we've just got a few here, like this one's just brightening the eyes a little. If I just turn it on and off or delete it. So if I just delete, our eyes are a little dark, bring them out a bit. And then this one is just the face. So I probably did this one first. So I just wanted to brighten the neck area, the face, um, take out a few of those shadows around there. So shadows up, highlights down. So I brought exposure up just to create a bit of brightness around the face. And then when you bring exposure up, sometimes your highlights get a bit bright. So I dropped the highlights to keep that harsh light off her face. You want to make it look nice and soft and then just I added a bit of contrast because sometimes you wash out your image when you bring up uh, exposure. So quite often I bring up contrast along with exposure and then I just added some warm tones. So up the warmth and then maybe she looked a little green. I wanted to bring more reds out. So if you understand color theory, put in a bit of purple, you're gonna bring out those red and rich oranges a lot more. And, um, and then this one, 
I just wanted to, if I press O, this is where it's affecting. I just wanted to add in a bit of extra warmth and take down those highlights even more. So as you can see, maybe her face is getting a bit, little bit harsh there with the highlights. Bring the highlights down. And then if I didn't show you the location of the brushing on this one down here, if you press O, pretty much everywhere, I think I removed some of it from the forehead or right in the middle of the face because it was looking too harsh. So if you want to do that, you just click erase and then you can brush away parts and then Command Z will undo that. So yeah, that was the brushing I didn't show you during the process, but that's it. I think overall it could be a touch warmer. So let's try, maybe might settle for four, one, three, go. Yeah, um, pretty close. I'll just leave it there, guys. Make sure you go check out his other tutorials because I think we went through from scratch and then like why I, I tweaked the curves and stuff like that. So I just applied the settings onto this one. Let's look at the reset before, white balance off, and then really bring out all those colors. And yeah, that's it for this one. Okay, so that wraps up that tutorial. Go give him a follow down in the description. His links are down there. Give myself a follow over on Instagram and check out the free lesson down in the description for my course where you guys can get access to a bunch of pro tutorials and raw images and lessons from other creators. So this is gonna be the number one resource for photo editing and learning to build out your own style because you'll actually learn the skills to implement and use presets and create create colors and create contrast and build out your own style and yeah you'll actually learn the skills for example that i use to do these tutorials so where do i put my colors how do i identify those colors and yeah that's all that's what i'm working on at the moment most of the time and if you guys want to give me a follow over on instagram that's where i'm posting a lot of stuff at the moment i want to keep youtube very tutorial based teaching based and then i'll try to build a bit of a community over on instagram go give me a follow over there guys comment people who you guys want to see on this channel so people that don't have many followers but they have great content great work and then comment them down in the description i go through all the comments i send emails out to the people that you comment and then i ask them to be part of this youtube channel so people that have great work and not too many followers and yeah that's all from me guys give marvin a follow and then give myself a follow over on instagram and uh that's it for this one I want to follow countless professional photographers step by step how they create their unique styles download the raw image download the preset follow along step by step how they create their style then you guys should start off with my free training on the curves so you could imagine an endless amount of exposure sliders tipped up and lined up across the horizontal axes. The number one question I get about Lightroom is how to use the curves. I've created a free masterclass on the curves. It's the number one question I get all the time. So sign up for the free training. Yes, I pitch my course at the end of the training, but once you see the value of this free training, you'll understand the curves, you'll understand the science behind the curves, and you'll be free to be creative using the curves. The number one problem I see is people try to be creative with the curves before understanding the science behind it. If you want a free training on the curves and how I've made 200 YouTube videos recreating popular styles, sign up for the free masterclass.